A village is being attacked by the three orc brothers. People are running for their dear lives, while others are getting killed by the three orc brothers. One of the orc brothers turns to their big brother and tells him that it looks like there is no one else to defy them. And the other little brother also turns and says that the village now belongs to them, the three orc brothers. The big brother agrees with them and tells them to raise a glass and have a wild celebration. As they celebrate, they ask each other if they will find more humans that are still alive if they search and look around. They laugh as they assure themselves that they might find some still alive. The three orc brothers are surprised to hear footsteps of a human approaching them. They look back and see a young kid and ask who it is. The kid tells them that he is Ixaba Asai, and he's an adventurer. Mockingly, the orc brothers start asking him questions. The first little orc asks, an adventurer? While the big brother asks if he will manage to take them all by himself. The other orc asks, a pipsqueak like you against us, the three orc brothers? Asahi tells them that it would be in their absolute best interest not to attack him, because if they attack and regret it afterward, it will be too late. Without hesitation, the big brother orcs rise from where they were sitting and rush to attack Ixaba Asahi, saying that he will crush them. As the big orc jumps trying to attack Asahi, an explosion happens around him, and a giant sharp rock in front pierces his chest and takes him all the way up. The two other orcs attempt to run, but a girl shows flying in the air and jumps on the big orc and sends an explosion to one of the orcs, and the orc explodes and dies. The other orc is blocked passage as he tries to flee from the girl. Asahi is looking at his body lying in the streets, dead after a car hit him while he was attempting to save a girl from the car. He asks himself if he did that because he never thought he'd do it. He starts to worry that he's dead, but later on starts to rejoice after seeing that the girl who he's trying to save is actually alive. He wonders if there are video games in the next world because he didn't get to play a new Armor's Core game when he was alive. He also wonders how everyone will react when they learn that he's dead, especially his sister, Maya Ni. As he worries about all of that, a light shines in front of him and pulls him in. He lands in a different world and asks himself where he is. He sees a dragon flying by and some strange things. He realizes he's in a completely different world and tries as much as possible to behave like a local. Asahi tries to check his phone so that he could make a call, but realizes there is no network. He decides to sell the phone and buy weapons he needs to help him be prepared. He tries to play around with the sword he has purchased and tells himself that he's ready and decides to go to the Adventurer's Guild. The receptionist receives Asahi and asks him if he is looking for a quest. Asahi tells her that it is his first time. She asks him if he's nervous since it's his first time. He tells her that he is a little nervous and she tells him that that's cute. The receptionist tells him that she will take responsibility for telling him all that he needs to know. She gives him a registration form to sign and Asahi says that it's sweet that the receptionist is good to him. Asahi writes his name and the receptionist tells him that they should now pick his first quest together. The receptionist tells him that since it's his first quest, he should start with something like hunting killer rabbits because they are rated E on the danger scale, so it's a simple hunting quest. Asahi takes up the quest before she could finish. Asahi encounters a huge wyvern as soon as he leaves his town and speaks to himself that he thought things were going to be a bit easier. The wyvern starts vomiting fireballs at him and keeps on chasing him from side to side. Asahi starts crying and screaming Mayani's name. Mayani appears from where Asahi was sitting helplessly. The wyvern spits another fireball at Mayani, but she dodges and comes out of it while flying. She wonders why her body feels light. Asahi is surprised to see that Mayani's body didn't sustain any damage. Mayani asks what's happening to her because she feels strength and wisdom surging inside of her. She says with that power, she can protect her brother. The wyvern tries to attack her, but she punches it and takes it down with one blow. Asahi is surprised that his sister has taken down the wyvern with one blow. Asahi asks his sister why she's with him in another world. He wonders if what is happening is just an illusion. Asahi is interrupted from his guesses by Mayani as she jumps on him and tells him that his big sis missed him. She speaks in admiration of Asahi's handsome features his smooth and huggable frame, and his wonderful scent that tickles her nostrils. 
Asahi asks her why she ended up in the world he's in. She thanks him for asking and tells him that when he fell into a coma after the accident, she was beside him as his big sister and was worrying about him. She tells him that in his sleep he started talking about this and that in another world and from time to time, he'd laugh as if he was having fun. So she formed a hypothesis that perhaps his spirit had traveled to a different world. She repeatedly bashed her head against a wall to get where he is. Asahi is surprised and asks her if she just followed him to death. He also asks her about the coma and if he's still alive in the other world. She tells him that he's alive but hasn't regained consciousness. He tells her that he feels relieved and Mayani tells him that she's relieved too. Asahi asks Mayani why she was so strong back there when she was fighting the wyvern. She tells him that the power of a big sister's love for her younger brother is mighty, so that may be the reason. Asahi tells her that doesn't explain anything. She asks him if it matters and gives him her hand. Telling him they should go, Asahi asks her if they should go back to their world. She asks him how they are going to do that. Asahi screams, saying that she followed him there without knowing how to get back. She assures him that his safety came first and everything else is secondary. She continues to say that now that this has happened, as siblings, they should carve out new lives in this world and starts laughing. Asahi says that when his sister is like that, she's no joke. Mayani kills the last orc of the three orc brothers. Asahi tells her that she's absolutely merciless as usual. Mayani tells him that how could she have possibly forgiven them when they called him a pipsqueak? She tells him that such an insult warrants death. Asahi asks Mayani if that's what she's focused on. She grabs Asahi by the face and notices a scrape on his right eye. She starts complaining that she has lost the right to be his big sister for allowing his delicate porcelain-like skin to be blemished. He asks her if she's valuing his skin a little too highly. She tells him that they will use an elixir, but Asahi refuses, telling her that most people use those for taking on the final boss. Asahi tells her that a bit of a spit is enough to heal up a scrape. Mayani asks him if he means a bit of spit while licking her lips with her tongue. She tells him that he wants his big sister to lick him all over and asks him if that's what he's saying. Iksaba looks at her and tells her that is not what he means, but Mayani still jumps on him and tells him that they are siblings, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. As Mayani and Asahi are playing around with each other, the villagers come out from hiding and ask themselves if the village is now safe. A little girl says she has the answer to that and points at Asahi, saying that he's the man who has killed the monsters for them. An elderly person breaks down in tears and calls Asahi a mighty hero. They tell the rest of the villagers that they should praise the mighty hero. Asahi asks his big sister if it seems like what she did has somehow been attributed to him. Mayani tells him that there's nothing wrong with that because she's so proud to hear everyone cheering for her little brother. Back at the Adventurer's Guild, the receptionist congratulates Asahi. He asks what it's all about, and she tells him that his rank has gone up. He's leaped from rabbit class to ogre class. She tells him that it's a huge promotion for him, and rising so far up the ranks that quickly is honestly unprecedented. She tells him to hold up his hand, and she gives him his ogre class badge. She explains to him that the badge belongs to him and must not be sold or given to anyone else. He tells her that he would not do that. After all, he has never been showered with that much praise before. The receptionist tells him that falsifying his rank is not allowed either. And if he is found doing that, the result is death. Asahi is begging Mayani to hide her strength and make it seem like he's the strong one. Mayani tells him that even if she does not understand, she will do as he says. Asahi tells Mayani that he should check her stats. She asks what stats and he tells her that's her numbers. She tells him that she will show him but only for him because he's special. She reaches for his hand and places it on her breast and tells him that from top to bottom they are 92, 58. Asahi is shocked and tells her that he did not mean her measurements. She asks him if he meant the number of beauty marks on her body. He tells her to hold out her hand and says status and screen will appear with her status. Asahi is shocked to see her levels are so maxed out and that her ability scores stretch off the screen. He tells her that she should never let anyone see her stats. Mayani tells Asahi that she wants to see his numbers as well, like the number of beauty marks on his body. 
she jumps on him again. As they are having their moment, they hear the voice of a woman screaming a male name, saying, Siegfried Sama. Asahi and Maini peek through a corner to see what's going on. Asahi asks if they are famous, and a voice from the crowd tells him that they are the strongest party, Clan Balmunk. Asahi recognizes the voice of the man as the man he met earlier at the pawn shop where he sold his phone. As they talk, all the people start following where the Clan Balmunk group is heading. He asks what the big parade is for, and the pawn shop owner tells him that it's a send-off parade. They're heading off to defeat the Demon King. Iksaba Asahi asks if there is also a demon in this world, and Maya asks about the demon. Asahi tells her that the Demon King is a final boss. And in Isekai stuff, defeating a Demon King can sometimes send you back to your own world. Mayani says she will go and defeat this person really quick. The pawn shop owner laughs and tells them that no matter how high their rank is right now, they need to gain more experience. He tells them that the leader of Balmonk is a dragon class adventurer. Asahi says he would love to be like them one day. As they're talking, a man starts causing chaos because the Balmunk leader who keeps him under control is gone. The people start telling Asahi to fight the man to protect them from him. Asahi tells Mayani to help him fight and take down the man, and he will do anything she asks of him. Asahi and Mayani manage to scare away the man, and the whole village applauds them. Iksaba Asahi is in the middle of a slime hunting quest as a novice adventurer. Asahi says he's embarrassed to say that he can finally beat a single slime easily, because that is the level he's at. Mayani, on the other hand, uses her power, calling it Big Sister Fire, and she manages to take down about a hundred thousand slimes. Asahi wonders what the Big Sister Fire attack name is. Mayani turns to Asahi and says that it looks like Asahi has taken care of things on his end too. She tells him he's amazing and she's proud of him. She hugs him, saying that that's a reward for him. The leader of the clan Balmunk is badly injured, and he's on his knees while holding onto his sword. He looks around to see that all his teammates are lying dead. He speaks to himself that they have driven off dragons, and yet they have been reduced to the state he is now. He looks around and sees the demon king they have been fighting sitting on some rocks in front of him. He tells the demon king to tell him her name. The demon king tells him that she's simply someone who is far stronger than any dragon. The leader of the clan Balmunk rises and jumps with his sword to attack the demon king, but is stopped by the demon king after she raises her hand at him and casts magic on him, killing him on the spot. The demon king says, what a bore, and complains that all of them fell after just one hit. She asks herself where she can find a fearless fighter who can entertain her properly. Asahi and Mayani are taking a walk, and Mayani sneezes. Iksaba Asahi looks at her and asks her if she has caught a cold. Iksaba Asahi draws closer to her and tells her that it is because of her that she's always dressing in a way that makes her catch a cold. He takes his coat and wraps it around her. Mayani looks at him and tells him that, in that case, he should warm her up with his body heat. Before Iksaba Asahi could say anything, she jumps on him. Iksaba Asahi screams at her and asks her if they're going down that route again. Iksaba says he cannot keep relying on Mayani forever. He tells himself that from now on, he will take on a quest he should complete on his own, and starts taking a walk. From an upstairs building, Mayani opens a window from her room and starts talking to herself. She's glad that she followed Asahi to this world. After all, she gets to be with Asahi from the time they say good morning to when they say good night. She tells herself that she bets he's in the next room, thinking the exact same thing. Mayani is startled when she realizes that she cannot sense Iksaba's Asahi's presence in the next room. She opens the door of the room where she was expecting Asahi to be. She looks around the room and sees that Asahi is not there. She sees a letter on the table that Asahi wrote, telling her that he's going for a walk, so she must be careful not to catch a cold. Mayani touches Asahi's bedding and realizes that the place where Asahi slept is still warm. She tells herself that Asahi can't have gone very far. She starts pondering where Asahi might go, that is close by. She thinks in her mind and is excited. What about his bed? She jumps on Asahi's bed and says that she can feel his warmth and his scent as she flips herself in the bedding. She asks herself if she is in paradise. Asahi is at the Adventurer's Guild and is asking for a quest contract. 
The receptionist tells him to wait a moment. Asahi thanks Tanya, who is the receptionist, and tells her that he's in her hands. Tanya tells him that if she had to recommend the perfect quest to match his ogre class rank, she would show him a troll hunting quest, or a quest to swipe a wyvern's egg. Asahi is scared about the recommended quest and says to himself that both of the quests have high difficulty levels. He says there's no way he can do either on his own. He continues to talk to himself and decides that he should get Tanya to give him a quest. He can finish up quickly. Because if he's late back and Mayani gets worried, she might show up. Asahi asks Tanya if there is anything easy and close to town. Tanya tells him that there are only rabbit and goblin class quests near where they are. Asahi tells her that he doesn't want to forget how it felt when he started out. And if any danger befell the town, he'd be able to rush back there. Tanya looks at Asahi in awe and compliments him, saying that he's amazing. She tells him that if he wants something quick and easy, then he should take the quest of gathering rainbow mushrooms in the Claudio Forest. Tanya tells Asahi that it might be fulfilling for someone who's the ogre's class. Asahi tells her that no matter how small the request might be, someone has to do it. Tanya agrees and tells him that she will leave it to him then. Asahi speaks to himself that it is just searching for mushrooms, so he should be able to handle it without the help of Mayani. He says he will finish it up quickly and earn EXP and Manny or money to pay for the room at the inn. Asahi is gathering mushrooms in Claudio Forest. He asks himself why there aren't any adventurers in the forest. As he looks around, he sees a warning sign that says beware of bears. He comforts himself, saying it is probably pretty rare to run into a bear. After saying those words, he hears an uncomfortable sound behind him. He looks back and sees a bear. He tells himself that he shouldn't have rushed to conclude that he wouldn't run into a bear. Asahi starts running for his dear life as the bear keeps chasing after him. He tells himself that Mayani is not there to protect him, so he might as well just figure out how to deal with the situation by himself. He turns back and throws mushrooms at the bear, but the mushrooms land in the bear's mouth. The bear stops and starts eating the mushrooms. Asahi realizes the situation is now figured out as the bear is not chasing after him but eating the mushrooms. Unfortunately, the bear finishes the mushrooms and starts planning on attacking Asahi again. But the demon king shows up and kills the bear with her magic. Asahi lands on her breasts. He thinks that it's Mayani because of her breasts, the timing, and the scent. Asahi starts apologizing that Mayani has ended up saving him again, and he is useless without his big sister. The demon king looks at him and asks him why he calls her his sister. Asahi lifts up his eyes and sees that it's not Mayani. He looks at her while still wrapping his arms around her waist. He looks at her horns and asks who she is and what the horns are for. The demon king asks him how long he intends to keep clinging onto her. Asahi steps back and apologizes. The demon king tells Asahi that calling her big sister doesn't displease her. She laughs and tells him that he had set her heart racing. Asahi tells her that he mistook her for someone else and thanks for saving him. The Demon King looks around and tells Asahi that his gratitude was a little premature. Asahi looks around and sees that they are surrounded by bears and starts to panic. The Demon King tells Asahi not to fret because no matter how many weaklings amass, they are still weak. The bears launch an attack and start running towards the Demon King and Asahi. The Demon King grabs Asahi by his backpack and throws him up in the air. With her magic, she fights the bears and kills them all one by one. Before Asahi could reach the ground, she manages to catch him in her arms, and Asahi tells her that it was amazing. The Demon King tells Asahi that she came to test her strength by eliminating some bears, and Asahi did a good job as bait. She puts Asahi down. They hear a crack on the ground near them, and a voice speaks from underground, complaining about the 13 bears the Demon King has killed. The voice asks how they dare to do that to his followers. A huge bear comes out of the ground telling them that what they have done is unforgivable. Asahi is surprised and says, a huge bear talking and wearing clothes? The Demon King says that she thought it might eventually show up itself if she kept hunting bears in that area. She tells Asahi that this bear is the guardian of Claudio Forest, Kaiser Bear. Kaiser Bear says she loves battling and hunts fellow demons to test her strength, which is something that is often said of Kilmaria of Corruption. 
Kilmaria laughs and says, what lovely compliments. Asahi asks how he got himself into this situation when all he was trying to do was gather mushrooms. But all of a sudden, a defeat the raid boss event has started. He tells himself that if he manages to land even one hit on it, he will probably get a ton of EXP. The Kaiser Bear warms up its power and breathes fire against Kilmaria and Asahi. He thinks they are dead, but is surprised when the smoke fades. Asahi looks at Kilmaria and asks her if she chose to save him again. Kilmaria tells him that he called her big sister, so she has to save her little brother. Kilmaria tells Asahi to stand back and that it's her turn now. She looks at the Kaiser Bear and tells it that as a farewell gift to take to the afterlife, she will show it what real flames look like. She disappears and appears in the air, throwing a fireball at the bear and killing it on the spot. Kilmaria comes down and sees that there's nothing left of the bear. She says she thought perhaps the king of the bears might be able to satisfy her, but it was another one-hit KO. Asahi talks to himself thinking that Kilmaria is incredibly powerful. He thinks that she's as strong as Mayani or even stronger. Kilmaria asks Asahi if he's hurt and he tells her that he's fine. He then asks her who she is exactly and if she is what people call a demon. Kimaria nods and tells him that she's a top-ranking officer in the Demon King's army, one of the Demon King's six generals. Kilmaria of Corruption. Asahi is amazed and says he feels like she just used an incredible string of words. He says she's like the warring triad, the four divas, or the seven heroes. Someone like those. Kilmaria assures Asahi that he shouldn't worry because she has zero interest in weaklings, so she won't attack him. Asahi talks to himself, thinking that just because she's a demon doesn't mean humans are automatically her enemy. And on top of that, she has saved him twice. Kilmaria tells Asahi that a sister who'd pounce on her little brother doesn't exist. Asahi tells her that she actually exists and she's not far from there. Kimaria asks Asahi if she can ask him something. Asahi tells her that if it's something he can answer, then he will. She asks him if he knows any adventurer named Iksaba Asahi. She tells him that that person appeared in the guild like a comet and has gained much acclaim as an adventurer. As she keeps explaining what this hero has done and how she'd love to fight him, Asahi starts running silently but he drops his ogre class medallion and it lands at Kilmaria's feet. Kilmaria picks up the medallion and realizes that Asahi is the young man she has saved. She stops him and says she indeed must not judge a book by its cover. Asahi starts running away and Kilmaria chases after him while flying and making it sound funny. Asahi says it's nothing to joke about as he keeps running. Asahi lands on Mayani's breasts, and this time he gets the same scent and timing that confirms it is indeed Mayani. Kilmaria asks if Mayani is the one who attacked her. They start fighting, and their powers seem to match each other. As Kilmaria and Mayani continue to fight, Kilmaria enjoys the fight and keeps smiling, but she fails to overpower Mayani. Kilmaria accepts defeat and tells Mayani to finish her off. But Asahi stops Mayani from killing Kilmaria because she saved him twice. As Mayani and Asahi make their way back, Kilmaria says she has met the most interesting siblings. Asahi was standing on the bridge with his sister. He yelled and his sister Mayani asked, What is it Asahi? Asahi pointed at his status window, telling her that he had finally reached level 10, double digits. Maya told him it was wonderful and she congratulates him. Asahi turned to look at Mayani, telling her that it was a kind of level you reach by finishing the tutorial, but he was still really happy about it. Mayani replied saying that it meant hardly any EXP from the dozens, if not hundreds of monsters she beat, went to him. Asahi told her that it looked like what he got was based on how much damage he inflicted, or how much he contributed to the battle. So for healers it's time healing, and for supporters it's buffs and debuffs cast. He looked at his sister again, telling her that he would have to work hard so that he could fight on his own. Mayani told Asahi that she knew an easy way to help him level up. Asahi anxiously asked her to tell him the way. She explained that she would capture a monster and he could just keep attacking it. Asahi interrupted her, saying that it was being a bully. Even if it was to raise his level continually, hacking an enemy that couldn't defend itself, it was something that he just couldn't do. 
She told him that she thought it was a brilliant idea. Then another idea popped into her head, and she asked, What if you attack me? Since her level was so high, he should get tons of experience. Asahi asked, Me? Attack you? Mayani? Then he told her that it was something he couldn't do either, and that the chances were very slim. But what if I hurt you? He said while scratching his cheek. Upon listening to what Asahi had said, Mayani jumped on her baby brother, hugging him while telling him that he was just the most adorable little brother she couldn't bear. Asahi got annoyed by her and yelled at her, asking whether she couldn't just pause a little before attacking him like that. Asahi looked at his status window while his sister stood behind him. He said, besides leveling up slowly and disrupting, upgrade points is the fun part. To get strong using a hack is to renounce all the fun of a game. Then he saw that Mayani was quiet. He asked her what was wrong, and she told him that there is no point in getting stronger since she always ends every battle in one hit. If he stepped up to face the real danger, it would be terrible, Asahi replied. Even so, I want to get strong. Then he crossed his arms on his chest and huffed. He opened his status window again, saying for now he will leave any specialized training for when he leveled up a bit more, and he would like a new skill. Before he could finish his sentence, she hugged him from behind, looking at the status window, telling him that he's done with checking his stats, so he should give his sister some attention. He told her to stop pestering him all the time, then he clicked a button on the status window, and he found a skill. He pressed on it and disappeared from his sister's grasp. She nearly fell down due to his sudden disappearance. She looked behind her and saw Asahi a few feet away from her. Asahi was happy with his newfound skill, a slipping away skill. He said that with that skill, he can escape Mayani's glomping. She heard him and got furious. Asahi asked her what was wrong, and she replied, Didn't you know, Asahi? The more my prey tries to run away, the more fired up I get. He looked at her terrified and sweat dripping from his forehead saying she's a man-eater. He tried telling her not to make her little brother her prey, but she didn't listen and she had already advanced towards him. He tried using his escape skill, but nothing happened. He realized that he's out of MP after just one use. She jumped on him and they landed on the floor. She told him that he can't get away from his big sister while Asahi was screaming that he should have put more points into his MP. Asahi walked into a house, telling himself that if he keeps relying on Mayani all the time, he will never get stronger. He stopped in front of a notice board, looking at the papers, saying he should try forming a party with someone else. Looking at the papers, he saw all the vacancies and said that they have really tough prerequisites. He wondered if they're looking for people for jobs, saying he forgot about it since he had been adventuring with his sister. But joining a party is one of the real-life strengths of Isekai stories. Taking on a raid boss with everyone pooling their strengths for the battle, exploring lots of different places, eating and sleeping side by side, making memories, and maybe there would be some romance, he said while imagining all of it. Then Tanya broke him out of his trance, asking him if he was looking for party members. She told him that this time of year it's all people who didn't get picked. Like these, for example, she said, pointing at the board. They've been up for about two months. Asahi turned to look at her, and then she asked him if he had been flying solo the whole time. He replied that he had been working with Mayani, his big sister. Tanya asked that he must be the vanguard while his sister supports him from the rear. He told her that Mayani annihilates everything, and he just watches from a safe distance. Tanya told him that he can put together a party however he likes. But a famous and well-balanced one is the one Siegfried leads, the Balmung. Then she started telling him about the Balmung members. Gul'dan is a tank with impenetrable defense. Sorceress Mimosa's son excels in every form of magic and handles healing buffs and debuffs. The elven archer Shulain San is a long-range attacker. While Siegfried engages the enemy close up, she told him that it's an ideal party, and he replied that splitting up roles in a party and fighting together sounds really great. Then he asks Tanya what Siegfried was doing now. He went to go defeat the Demon King, didn't he? Asahi asked. Tanya went close to him and whispered that they nearly got wiped out by a mysterious enemy on the way. So they fled and came back. What? But they're Balmung, he said. Tanya replied that it's true and wondered what kind of fearsome enemy could have done it. She also told Asahi to be careful. Asahi told her that he will think about it a little more before joining the party. He left the building and was passing through the market, thinking that if he teams up with other people, 
Myony voices interrupted him, telling him to watch where he was going. One of the boys in the trio cried that his shoulder hurts, and the other guy yelled at the drunk man that he was dislocating their brother's shoulder. So they're going to need money to patch him up. Asahi watched as the trio was picking on the drunk man and told himself that he will stay out of it. They told the wino to give them money, and he replied that he spent it all on alcohol. One of the men told his friends that he's broke, and the other drew out his sword, saying he can just die. Asahi threw stones, hitting them in the head. He told the wino to escape while he kept them busy. The trio ran towards Asahi. He planned to draw them away and use escape to elude them. Before they could reach Asahi, the drunk guy lunged at them and beat them up. Asahi wondered who the guy was as he watched him fight. Then the guy started vomiting. Asahi went and rubbed his back, looking at him up close. He realized that he was Siegfried's son from Balmung. Asahi gave him water to drink and then asked him if he is Siegfried, the dragon hunter. Siegfried replied that right now he is undeserving of such an impressive title. That loyal dog Pochi is the right title for him. Then he explained that they set out to defeat the Demon King but failed spectacularly. They were beaten by a single demon and its power was overwhelming no matter what attacks they used. Batted like a baby's fist, Asahi replied that he didn't know someone so fearsome could exist. Siegfried told him that he lost his confidence because of that. When Asahi called Siegfried's name, he snapped, screaming why his parents gave him a pretentious name like that saying he worked hard to make sure he didn't bring shame to that name. He continued screaming and crying while rolling on the floor. Asahi told him that he gained many irreplaceable things like allies, friends, and all kinds of memories. He got up from the floor and told Asahi that life doesn't work that way. He told him the natural order of things and everything he didn't like about his team members. But Asahi asked him if they were always protecting each other. He replied, and Asahi went back to the building to tell Tanya that he will apply for one of the parties, but Tanya told him that they got an urgent quest of a Borden Wyvern attacking a settlement out of town, and she wanted him to go since all the high-ranking adventurers were out. He told her that he has to head back to get ready first, but Tanya told him that they don't have the time and shoved him into a carriage. Asahi found himself in front of three wyverns. One of the wyverns was flying towards him. But Kilmaria killed it before it could attack Asahi. She told him that she sees he's surrounded by calamity as usual. Asahi was surprised to see Kilmaria, and she told him to call her Big Sister. He thanked her for saving him again, and she replied that he's weak and someone had to save him. He looked at her, thinking that he's not weak, but the ladies around him are just too strong. Then he asked her if she's there to kill monsters or to test her strength again. She replied that she came to return his adventurer badge and gave it to him. More wyverns appeared, and when Kilmaria was getting ready to attack, they heard Mayani scream, Big Sister Thunder, and burn the wyverns. Kilmaria said she has come, her true target. When she was about to challenge her, Maya walked past her like she didn't see her and asked Asahi if he's alright. He told her, he's alright, not a single scratch, and then she told him that they should be heading home. Kilmaria told them to stop, and Myani asked, you were here too, half-naked horned woman? Kilmaria replied, yes, I was, and who are you calling half-naked? Myani replied that her appearance is harmful and tantalizing to Asahi, and she told her to remove herself from his sight. They continued arguing, and Asahi yelled at them to stop dragging him in the middle of their arguments. Kilmaria grabbed Asahi and ran off, telling him to make sad faces so that his sister could save him. He told her that he can't do that, it's pathetic. She turned and saw Maya descending from the sky and punched her. She took Asahi and started heading home when Kilmaria tripped her, making her fall on her face. They started catfighting while a wyvern came and took Asahi, flying into the sky. His screams broke them apart and Maya told the wyvern to drop Asahi. Then she used her big sister Thunder Break to kill the wyvern, and Asahi landed in Kilmaria's arms. Kilmaria told Maya that she attacked without hesitating, and she replied that she simply entrusted the right person for the job. Then Maya told Asahi that they should head home. Kilmaria grabbed Asahi, saying this time she won't be caught off guard, so she can come at her. Asahi used his escape skill and slipped from her grip. Kilmaria asked if he had learned teleportation skill, and he replied that he can't do it unless he is focused. Then Kilmaria bid them goodbye. Mayani was watching Kilmaria leave, and she turned and caught Asahi staring at her. 
Why are you looking at me so intently? She asked and asked him whether she has something on her face. He replied that he was just thinking that she's all he needs. She asked if it was a passionate proposal from him about how he doesn't need anything but her. She grabbed him and he screamed, telling her that it's not in that way. He meant in his party. She replied that tonight is the party and she won't let him sleep. Asahi yelled that it's not that kind of party. Yeah. <laughs>